Thank you for joining. In the next few lessons we will continue the Planets project. And this lessons video will be dedicated to seeding the data using Entity Framework and the Model Builder class. Firstly, let's examine the properties we need to implement in the Water model. Here we have the ID, and this ID of type GUID will serve as a foreign key. Based on our provided Water class, Entity Framework will use the ID property as the primary key for the Water entity. Since the planet entity refers to the water ID property, Entity Framework will create a foreign key relationship based on the water ID property during migration to update our database schema. Next, we have the water type, and we will have two types of water, liquid and frozen. Alternatively, you can use ice instead of frozen, along with the third type labeled as unknown. The final property is an image, which will represent the type of the water on the planet. It's a nullable parameter. You can include it or skip it. Usually I include some pictures. If you need ready-to-use image links, please feel free to copy them from GitHub. In any case, they will be from Wikipedia. So in the planet model, this part, which is water ID, will refer to one of the three available types of water we just discussed, using a specific GUID. And a unique GUID for either liquid, ice, or unknown will be assigned to every type. Now let's open the HiKaiTalkDB context. Just to remind you, when we started this project, I prepared this code with Model Builder. And at that time I mentioned that it would be used later in the project. Well, the time has come. I will uncomment this part and delete unnecessary code. Inside, we need to provide the required GUIDs that we will be using as a key to refer to the water type. And just to recap the properties we need to implement, in the Solution Explorer, let's unscroll our models. So we have three properties to implement, the ID, then water type, and finally image. First, let's write the code quickly, and then I will explain how it works and data flow of this part concerning model builder. To override the builder and use model builder, we create a variable that will hold the list of available water types. Waters will be of the list type, and inside it we will store the waters GUIDs, types and images. Let's create the first instance. We need to include the GUID, include the type itself, and an image. Now we can duplicate it, and let's change the water types. Finally, they will be liquid ice and unknown. And the images for now we can include dummy data. But as I mentioned, I will include some real images later. Finally, we need GUIDs. To generate them, open the tools and then select create GUID. I will generate three of them. Edit them and don't forget to remove any unnecessary symbols. Then chain the parse method on every GUID. And they should look like this. The last part for now is to ensure that certain records are present in the database from the start. With this line, using model builder entity water, we configure the water entity and then call has data to seed the data specified in the waters list into the database. So all required items are completed. And before we move on to the next step, I will quickly explain this code. In Entity Framework, the onModelCreating method is part of the dbContext class. It's called when the model for a derived context has been initialized, but before the model is locked down and used to initialize the context. Locked down is a standard term, and in the application lifecycle, it means that the model is considered finalized, and any further changes to it are not allowed. So this method on model creating is typically used to configure the database schema, relationships, and other aspects of the model. This part based on model creating, model builder, calls the base class implementation of on model creating, which is the DB context. This call ensures that any configuration in the base class is executed. Simply put, we are saying execute the on model creating method in the base class before continuing with any additional configuration in this derived class. The next stage will be data initialization, meaning we will initialize a list of water objects. Each object represents a different type of water with a unique ID, type, and image. This list is currently defined within the method, but it's not being used. 
for anything beyond its declaration. To get it used, we would need an additional configuration, and this additional configuration is the string. In Entity Framework, the Entity T method is part of the Model Builder class and is used to configure an entity type in the model. It allows us to define how the entity is mapped to the database, including properties, keys, relationships, and so on. So to summarize, this string is essentially saying, first, for the water entity, use the data provided in the waters list. And the second, this data should be included during the database seeding process. One more aspect to consider. While using the hasData method is convenient for small amounts of seed data, such as the project we have here, for more complex configurations, you might consider using the Fluent API within the onModelCreating method. This can provide a more explicit and flexible way to configure entities, relationships, and other aspects of the model. So the first part is complete with that. The next step will be to seed the data for the solar systems. So let's copy this part of the code we just created. The variable name will be solar systems. Type solar system. And don't forget to change it for both the list type and model builder. Also, all types inside the list need to be changed to solar system. Two systems will be used, and the third one can be removed. It will suffice for now since every solar system contains approximately eight or nine planets each. Next, we need to change the GUIDs. Using the same menu, Tools GUID, we need to generate two additional GUIDs. And then, as always, remove all unnecessary symbols. Then the type needs to be changed to code and include the required code for every system. You can name it as you wish. Just to remember the model constraints we implemented earlier. Next, in accordance with our model, we need the name of the system. And we can add it right here. So our system will be the solar system, and the other one, as you remember, will be the Trappist one. Images remain unchanged. Before we continue, let's open SSMS and clean the database just to ensure we encounter no errors. You can write delete, from, and then duplicate the string by pressing Ctrl D, and for every command, drag and drop the corresponding table. It should look like what you see now. And then execute the query either by pressing the execute button or pressing Ctrl F5. Everything is cleared and we can start the migration process. You should remember the process from the previous lessons. Let's open Tools, then New Get Package Manager, and then Package Manager Console. We need two commands here. The first one will be Add Migration, and then in quotes your comment. I will include a data seed, solar systems, and water. Then you get a message, build started, and completed. As always, you will get the snapshot of the migration in the migration folder. This file just appeared since we executed the command. To make necessary data records in the database, as you remember, we need to run the second command, update database. After the execution went well, the file with the name exactly as the comment we provided with the first command execution has appeared. In case you haven't followed this course, and you need to know what the seed in Entity Framework is and how it all works, I have provided the link under the video with the full tutorial, including explanations of these migration files. So now, just to be sure the database contains the data, we can again open SSMS and send a query to see if the data is here. For the Solar Systems table, the data is here. And let's send a command for the water. And it has also arrived. Similarly, we can open Swagger to see if the data is provided correctly. I will send a GET request, and as you can see, all the data is here. So all went well, and we can continue with the projects controller in the next lesson. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest videos by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!